What's the problem with having friends uh, of the opposite gender if my intentions are pure? How many of you have ever seen the clip, Why Guys and Girls Can't Be Friends? Raise your hands. Tayyip, you need to watch it. I promise you it's not a sheikh. It's not going to be a guy with a big beard that's going to tell you why guys and girls can't be friends. It was actually an experiment on a college campus by a non-Muslim. So basically he asked the guy, he asked, you know, it takes guys and girls and he asked them, uh, he asked the guys, um, do, you, do you think you could ever, you know, do you, do you ever think about that person in, in, a, in a sexual way or things of that sort? And he asked the girls the same question. And uh, so all of them said, no, of course we can be friends and we don't think that way. Then whenever he had the guys alone, he asked them the same question. Do you think guys and girls could be friends? He's like, nah. All of them said no. And all the girls were like, yeah, of course. Then he asked the girls, he said, well, do you think that if you opened yourself up to a relationship with him that he'd be willing to engage in a relationship with you? And they were like, oh yeah, of course. You know? And so the point was, the end of the experiment was guys and girls can't be friends, of course, in that regard. The point is, and, and I'm, not, I'm not an advocate for, I think that, you know, subhanAllah, Sheikh Salman al-Auda once said something very po powerful. He said, if you close the doors to that which is permissible, people will break the doors. People will break them and people will transgress. There was communication and interaction between genders at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, but it was respectful. It was limited to what was necessary. It was not, it, you know, subhanAllah, we teach split personality. Seriously, it's like the sister comes to the masjid, she's an alien, right? But whenever she's outside, mashallah, she's fair game. You know, uh, there, that's hypocrisy. We should learn to be consistent. In essence, the Rasulullah, we were forbidden from khalwa. We were, we were forbidden from being alone with one another. We were forbidden from being flirtation, fl flirtatious and promiscuous, from exposing anything from the hijab. Guys and girls, guys, you've got a hijab too. I'm just letting you know, you, you also have to observe certain limits. So don't think you can post whatever pictures you want to post too. Okay, khalwa, being alone, cyber khalwa. All right, G chat and Facebook chat with all the smiley faces and things of that sort. And I think you looked really good in your jersey today and whatever it was, all of that is not allowed either. Now, why is it? What if my intentions are pure? And this is something I really want to address. From the maqasid of sharia, from the objectives of divine legislation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses norms. Allah does not address exceptions. The sharia is based upon norms, not on exceptions. If you feel like you can be with, if guys, you feel like you can be with a girl and she's just my cousin, she's just my, she's my really good friend, you know, I don't ever feel that way with, towards her, you are not the norm, you are the exception. The, the legislation will not circle, will not be based on the exceptions, it will be based on the norms. Just a month ago, I had a sister that took one of my classes that told me that she was with her male cousin alone in the car. He used to drop her off to school every day for two years and all of a sudden he groped her. They're both masjid goers. She didn't know how to deal with it. She said, I never expected it. You know, I never thought of him that way, but obviously he was thinking of me that way. And that's the first thing that's wrong with this question. My intentions were pure. How can you know the intentions of the other person? You cannot know the intentions. And let me just tell you something, sisters, guys play a lot of games. No offense, man. You can just, brothers, just cover your ears. We are not who you think we are sometimes, okay? As long as a man is still biologically a man, he still is attracted to a woman, okay? Unless he's undergone some procedure or something like that, he's still a man, he still likes women, he still likes sisters, okay? So Allah addresses the norms, not the exceptions. Maybe you can control yourself, but not everyone can.